Hello, my friends, and welcome once again to Declaring Liberty. I am Mark Romano, and today is Wednesday, February 22nd. Now, here's what I want to discuss today. As you are probably aware, the foreperson for the special purpose grand jury in Fulton County, Georgia, is out there giving interviews. Now, just so we're all on the same page, the special purpose grand jury was impaneled to investigate and hear evidence of potential crimes committed uh, regarding Donald Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election in the state of Georgia. Now, that grand jury has concluded its business, it's issued its report, and it has been disbanded. Okay? And now, the foreperson of that grand jury, a woman named Emily Coors, is out there giving interviews. And that's what we're going to talk about. And there's two things um, with respect to to those interviews that I want to discuss. Number one is whether it's proper for her to be doing this and could this damage the case in any way, any potential cases. And number two, there were things in these interviews that led me to believe that the grand jury did in fact recommend indictments, well, an indictment against Donald Trump and other indictments, obviously. We know that indictments were recommended because she said this, but she didn't name names. But Things that were said lead me to believe that among the people recommended for prosecution was Donald Trump himself. And there is something specific that really leads me to this conclusion. And it's not something that she said. It was her body language in response to a question. And I'm going to play for you a clip of exactly what I'm talking about. So stay tuned for that. But before we get to that, let's discuss the substance of her being out there running her mouth on this topic. Um, And before I get into that, that, let me say at the top, um, as a former defense attorney and prosecutor, it uh, disgusts me to hear her out there talking about this. She should not be talking about this. Um, It is not proper, just generally speaking, not legally speaking here, just generally speaking, it's not proper for her to be doing this. Um, It should be kept secret. Now, the question is, did she violate any laws or rules? Is she in violation here? Uh, The answer to that is no. It does not appear to be that she is in violation of any rules of the court or any Georgia state laws. All right. I am not an expert in Georgia state law. I'm not licensed to practice there. I've never practiced there, so I'm not an expert. But This is not rocket science. And from what I've read, um, grand jurors are prohibited in Georgia from discussing their deliberations. Okay, it's not a complete ban. It's not total secrecy, but they're not allowed to discuss their deliberations. And from what I've seen in these interviews, she did not discuss their deliberations. She answered some questions. Um, She maybe got close, but doesn't seem to me that she discussed any deliberations. She certainly did not discuss any evidence. She did not name any people in terms of who they recommended for prosecution. So she, in truth, she really didn't say a whole lot of anything. You know, she gave long interviews and she was asked a lot of questions, but she didn't really give much information. OK, so I don't see any violations here. Um, but that said, she should not be running her mouth. And the prosecutors, I'm sure would prefer that she keep her trap shut. And by the way, um, you know, she did seem to me to be thoughtfully trying to avoid violating any of the judge's instructions about what she could say and not say. And here is another thing to keep in mind, just to show you that there's not a complete secrecy imposed on grand jurors in the state of Georgia. The judge instructed them, the grand jurors, about what they could say and could not say. Okay, because, again, it's not a complete ban. It's not total silence. It's not total secrecy. So she seemed to be very thoughtfully trying to comply with the judge's uh, instructions and not to violate any of that. That said, this woman comes across as a bit of a nut. All right. Uh, and it was, you know, very cringy to watch her give these interviews. And again, I wish she wouldn't. She should shut Again, that having been said, I don't see any rule violations here. And here's something else. Let me put it this way. What do you think would be the proper remedy 
even if what she said did violate some sort of secrecy rules, okay? Again, she didn't say anything about the evidence. She didn't say anything about specific people in terms of recommendations for prosecution. So if she did violate some rule somewhere, what do you think would be the proper remedy? Because there's always two parts to this. There is the violation and then the appropriate remedy. What do you think the appropriate remedy would be here um, if a, a grand juror discussed things that they shouldn't have discussed that went on in the grand jury. Is that a get out of jail free card for the defendants? I mean, is Trump now off the hook uh, if she violated a, a rule here? No, no, that's not the appropriate remedy. Criminals don't get to get away with their crimes just because some idiot grand juror goes on TV and gets an interview. No, no. Um, if the grand juror did anything to prejudice the case in some way, to somehow potentially deprive a defendant of a fair trial, then there are steps, remedial steps that the judge can take to um, make sure that that is remedied, that the defendant gets a fair trial. Uh, and so this would just be part of the screening process for jurors. I mean, jurors are not allowed to, to – they don't make the jury if they have bias in advance if they have made their mind up about this case in advance. So you try to screen out people who know anything about the case. So the only remedy here would be to try to screen out um, potential jurors in a, in a jury trial. If, if Donald Trump or anyone else is eventually um, indicted and, and stands trial, those jurors, you will try to, to screen out those people who had heard this four person make her comments on TV. That, that's the remedy. And if she did violate any laws, she could be disciplined, all right? If she violated the judge's instructions or orders, she could be personally disciplined. But this does not let Donald Trump or any of these other cr criminal defendants off the hook, okay? It, it, it's not a get-out-of-jail-free card. doesn't work like that. So don't worry about it. Not going to happen. Um, and so, you know, I've heard people say, oh, well, now the defense is going to be able to raise motions. So that's what they do. They raise motions. They, they throw whatever crap against the wall they can think of to see if something's going to stick. But what kind of motion are they going to file here? That the, 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 We want a dismissal because this nutty grand juror said a few comments? No, no, no. And any motions they file on this aren't going to go anywhere. Uh, you know, just like lots of other motions they're going to file aren't going to go anywhere. And this, this, these would just be uh, more motions that aren't going to go anywhere. There's nothing to worry about here. Okay, what else? Um, here's another thing to keep in mind. This grand jury, the special purpose grand jury, is not the grand jury that would bring indictments. And that's very important to remember also. So what's the harm here? This grand jury... All it is doing is investigating and writing a report with recommendations to the DA. If anyone's going to get indicted here, the DA is going to decide who gets indicted and for what. They don't. She doesn't have to follow the recommendations of this grand jury. If the grand jury says you should you should indict so and so person, she she doesn't have to. She could say I'm not. No, there's not. I'm not indicting that person. There's not enough evidence, despite what the grand jury thinks. The grand jury is just lay people. They don't know anything about the law or any of this stuff. Um, so these are just recommendations. And if the DA decides to bring charges to seek indictments, she still needs to, to present all this evidence to another grand jury that may or may not even have been impaneled yet. Now, she's got a grand jury going on right now. She could present it to that grand jury or she can wait to the next grand jury, which probably will be, I think, gets impaneled in March. She can present it to that grand jury. But the point is, she has to present this evidence to an entirely different group of people. So this grand jury, uh, the one that this woman, this four person, this Emily Core, what, what I say in the Coors, um, the member of which she was, the grand jury of which she was a member, is not the one that's going to be indicting Donald Trump. Okay, so that's a very important thing to consider too. So you're going to challenge an indictment because uh, the four person of, an, of a grand jury that didn't in, return the indictment made some comments? No, it's ridiculous. There's nothing to worry about here in terms of the legal case. Now, it's not good 
for the political stuff. So I, I've had some people comment on me today to me on some of my tweets today saying, yeah, well, now it just gives uh, the MAGA Republicans something to complain about and, and they're going to say it's a witch hunt. and blah. They're going to say that anyway. Who cares what they say? I don't give a rat's ass what they say about anything. They're going to claim it's a witch hunt no matter what happens. So who cares? Let them complain. All I care about is that we have a strong case and that Donald Trump is, in, is indicted and convicted. That's all I care about. Let, let the MAGA lunatics uh, go insane. They're going to go insane no matter what happens. So let them. Um, okay, what else? Uh, blah, 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 blah. All right, so uh, I think I'm done with that part. Um, so important to remember, one, she shouldn't be talking. Two, it doesn't make any difference. Now, here's the other thing I wanted to discuss. As I said, there's lots of things that she said that lead me to believe they recommended Donald Trump for indictment. Um, one of the things is that they, she said that many people were recommended for prosecution. Um, an interviewer said, was it, was it, I think she said something along the lines of, was it a dozen? Um, and she said, yeah, about that or something along the lines. So, so it made it sound like it's give or take maybe a dozen people were recommended for prosecution. Now, what leads me to believe Donald Trump, part of the thing that leads me to believe Donald Trump is one of those people recommended for prosecution is how can you recommend really anyone for prosecution and not recommend Donald Trump, right? So if there's 10 or 12 people recommended for prosecution, it's almost inconceivable for me to think that Donald Trump is not going to be part of that. We heard his phone call. We know how aggressively he was pushing this. We know that everyone who went down there to pressure these people were doing so at Donald Trump's behest, right? Donald Trump threatened the Secretary of State with potential criminal charges on that phone call if he didn't find additional votes for Donald Trump and declare him the winner. I mean, the evidence against Trump is overwhelming. So how in the world do you recommend indictment for 10 to 12 people and you don't include Donald Trump among them? It's, it's, it's just very hard for me to believe. So that's that's one of the things. She said she said other things. But this, I'm going to show you in a second here. This is what really made me think, yeah, yeah, they recommended that Donald Trump be indicted. It's her body language. So I'm going to play this clip. She's asked whether or not, she asked, is asked specifically whether or not Donald Trump, um, whether the grand jury recommended Donald Trump for indictment. Take a look at this. Did the grand jury recommend an indictment of former President Trump? I'm not going to speak on exact indictments. Would we be surprised? Are there bombshells? Okay, did you see that? It's not what she said. OK, because she didn't affirmatively say, you know, one way or the other, yes or no, whether or not Donald Trump was among the people recommended for prosecution. But did you see her face after she answered? Did you see her face, that shit eaten grin she had on her face? That smirk said to me, yeah, we recommended Donald Trump for indictment. Take a look at it again. Did the grand jury recommend an indictment of former President Trump? I'm not going to speak on exact indictments. Would we be surprised? Are there bombshells? All right, I'm sorry. To me, the body language, that smirk, that says it all to me. She is right there, in my opinion, and I could be wrong. I don't know this woman. And um, clearly she's a bit of a nut. So who knows? I could be reading her wrong. But to me, it it's looks like she is saying by her facial expression that, yes, we recommended Donald Trump for prosecution. So, anyway, um, I hope this all was helpful. I hope this put your mind at ease a little bit. Um, yeah, it's not helpful that she's out there running her mouth. Oh, and, and by the way, I, I I know there's things that I, I'm forgetting to put in here. But anyways, um, someone said to me that, you know, this woman seems like a nut. And if she was voted 
four person, what does it say about the rest of the grand jurors? Here's the thing about that. These grand juries, as their first order of business, they must choose a four person. That's the first thing they do before they do anything else. And who are these grand jurors? They're complete strangers to one another. They get pulled at random from the public, right? And so they all get impaneled. They get sworn in and they're instructed by the judge that the first thing they have to do is select a four person. And from what this woman said in her interview, she volunteered. So you got a group of strangers, one person volunteering. And as you know, when, when, there's, when there's a group, a lot of times most people are shy and they don't speak up. They don't put themselves forward for anything. Uh, they don't want to be the first person to talk. They don't want to put themselves out there. So most people were happy to have someone else step up and offer to be the foreperson. And she volunteered. And they're all strangers still. They don't know each other. So to the extent that this woman is kind of a nut, none of the other grand jurors probably had any idea yet that she's a nut. They haven't been around her yet. Okay, now, if in fact she is a nut, they're probably all well aware that she's kind of loony, but they didn't know that at the time they um, elected her four person. She volunteered and, and basically from the way she tells it, everybody said, yeah, go ahead, you be the four person. So I don't think the fact that she seems to be a little nutty is any indication that the rest of them are nutty. Anyways, that was just as an aside. So anyways, that's it. Um, if you... Have any questions about any of this, um, follow-up questions, anything you'd like me to address in a future video, um, or you just want to ask me, leave, leave a comment there um, below, and I will do my best to answer your questions and um, maybe do another video uh, to address your questions. So anyways, that's it. Thank you so much, as always, for being here. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And until next time, take care, and I'll talk to you again soon.